Time for round two. Today I will be changing out the input shaft bearing on a D16 transmission. As you can hear, it's a little noisy. I did a video yesterday on taking the thing out. So this is the reason why I'm removing it. First thing I'm going to want to do is make sure this thing's in neutral. Yeah, it goes back and forth like this. That's how I know it's in neutral. And you pretty much want to keep it in neutral for the remainder of the remainder. There's an 8 millimeter Allen right here you want to take off. It's got a good amount of sealant on it so they don't come out too easy. And when you put this pin back in too, you want to make sure it's in neutral. There's three 12 millimeter bolts that have sealing washers on them. And these are spring loaded. There's a spring in here and there's a ball bearing inside of there. Those are for your shift detents. This is your reverse switch. 12 millimeter on here. This is right about a 19 millimeter. See, that's, that's for your reverse light. It's resting on the input shaft, so I'm gonna put a couple two by fours under here. And this cap's got to come off. This is just 3 a square. I got an actual square socket that's made for stuff like this. Now that I got that off, I can get all of these bolts out around the outside perimeter of this transmission. They should all be the same length. There's some pry points here and there. You want to just get the thing to pop separate the glue make sure it's floppy there and it's nice and floppy now there's a couple good pry points on this transmission what I'm gonna do is pry up on it really good I'm gonna stick some wedges in here so it's putting pressure on the case I can put one here and I can put one over here so it's good and tight. In this hole, there's a there's a clip in here for this bearing, and uh, you can use a needle nose or something. I got I got one of these fancy things. Um, a snap ring pliers will work too. This is kind of like a snap ring pliers. You just want to get in here and pry this out. You'll hear it pop. See, and it's all spread out. You you don't want you want to try not to damage the ceiling surface either with any kind of any kind of strong tools I'm just gonna stick this in here like this carefully and oh, there it goes yeah this is a 220,000 mile car I'm assuming it's mostly highway miles because the clutch pedal is not all wore out you know, if you look at the rubber on a clutch pedal, if, if you do a lot of highway driving at 220,000 miles, there, there won't even be any rubber on the pedal. It'll just be a piece of steel, and, and just the corner of it's wore out, which is nice. And and I can tell that nobody's been muscling these into gears, and somebody actually knew how to use a manual transmission because these synchronizers are not that bad. When you, when you look at these little brass teeth and... And they, they look like the pitch of a house. They're nice and square on both sides. Then you know it's good. Um, if if they start looking so so one of the so one side is wore out more than the other, then it's usually because somebody doesn't know how to use a manual transmission. Same same with the gears right here. They're not wore out. They're not chipped really really bad or anything. And I can I can I can look at these these rings and you can tell they're nice and sharp and 
they're not all ground out like crazy and the reason why they get like that is because people don't know how to use a transmission so I don't I, I don't I don't speed shift I don't muscle things into gears I let synchronizers slow the gear down like it's supposed to and you, you do that and you stop stop getting harsh on your transmission with the shift in and, and, and these things last a long time these, these look really good I, I don't I don't see a point in changing out these synchronizers um, a lot of people do just because but the way I use a transmission this thing will probably be good for a long time because I don't force gears and if, if it don't want to go into gear I don't put it in gear and if it if it makes a little grind because I do something wrong I put it in a different gear I don't try to mash it into gear like a lot of idiots do so and I, I always use my clutch I always make sure the clutch is all the way in I don't speed shift speed shifting kills transmissions when you don't use your clutch and you just jam it into gear it's just stupid I got some plastic bits here and there chunks of plastic oops that one fell somewhere I seen some in my there was some stuck in my differential bearing there was some here and there um, it's probably because of the cage for the input shaft bearing so I'm gonna take the rest of this out I'm, I'm really pleased with the way this looks and I like the way it shifts so I'm not gonna mess with it I got a magnet in here I'm gonna take out and clean that's not too bad yep there it is <clears throat> the cage on the input shaft bearing came apart there's a 10 two 10 millimeters for this reverse dog I'm gonna take off And then I got the reverse gear and pin. Whenever, whenever I rebuild transmissions too, I always, I always lay things left like this. It's just everything I do, I, I lay it left because if, if that, that way, you know, if, if if you think you know what you're doing, you're not going to put it in backwards. I got a 12 millimeter here. I got to take off. There's a little washer here. It's stuck. Come on. It's coming. I'm getting it. Not coming up for me. There it goes. Drop left, I did, I did. Left. See, I got a, I got a tapered washer and a regular washer. And I got my stuff over here. I'm just going to put it right back on there where I found it. There's a little bit of scoring on the input shaft where the bearing is, but it's not really worn. So I got to this in time enough. It's going to be fine. That one looks like hell. That's my noise. I got a barren kit. I'm going to get this carrier out of here now. It just comes right out like this. Them teeth look good. This is one wheel wonder stuff. Junk. All kinds of plastic everywhere. I got to clean out of this. I got a slide hammer with one of these tools on it. I'm going to get these bearings out with. Or try to anyways. That one won't let me. Because the plastic do jobbers in the way. Now on this one I'm going to bust this cage out of here. You can, you can flip this upside down and... and and torch the case right here you get it up to about you torch the back side with propane you get up to about 500 degrees and it'll expand this enough to where the bearing usually just falls right out 
I'm not going to do that though because I'm, I'm, I, I have a very destructive nature. So I'm just going to kind of bust this out of here and get these little bearings out. A lot of people don't even replace this bearing because it's, it's a pain to get out and it, it's usually good forever. You just got to be careful not to break this. You need that in there. I'm just makeshift in a puller. I don't know, stuff I got laying around. I got a bunch of different pullers and stuff. I'm going to put an extension down in this hole like this so I don't wreck anything. I got you. This is mucho important. I'm going to get this input shaft seal out. I'm going to take off these carrier bearings next. You know, I don't want to wreck this gear. It's plastic. It's really easy to wreck. This is a speedo gear. So I gotta I gotta grind these down because I've used them for too many years and there's no there's no sharp corners on them. So I actually got to make it look like this one. I already did that one. So it 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 grabs pretty nice now. Yeah, these bolts weren't long enough. <coughs> I had some head bolts laying around I'm trying to use. Well, there's little slots in this right here. If I'm careful enough, I can get this off without breaking it. Like so. See, there's slots in here too that gotta line up with these grooves. And of course, what would this job be without an M Factory LSD? I splurged. I'm going to need it someday. I just know it. I'll get two wheels to spin instead of one. Just in case I feel like building this thing farther. Just because I don't like getting stuck in the snow. Just I got the shaft clean real good. I'm going to blow these out. These synchronizers look really nice. And these rings, these rings right here, they're not all beat up. Sometimes they're Brennel. If they're really Brennel, then they're no good. All these little rubber washer things, there's like three little pins on them. You want to make sure that these three grooves go in those three little pins. So you turn this and it'll click. You'll feel it you'll feel a little bit of drag on the gear. Same thing here. There's three little teeth. I don't know if you can see those or not. These three little teeth. Three little grooves. See it didn't fall in because it spins really nice not falling in. And I don't know why. There. There. It's in. Little bastard. Yeah, that feels right. That one feels right. Double checking my junk. Yep. Now off to this fine piece of equipment. Put that over there.
Ooh, big chunks. Big grody chunks. Big roadie chunks. Not nice. Okay. Got some fairly big plastic chunks pulled out of this thing. Time to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. These only go on one way. There's these little open holes right there. And then these grooves right here. Nice. Now well, for this uh, this needle bearing, you want to make sure that the race goes on this way. And then you got the groove bearing. You want the groove faced up. I'm just going to use a socket, pound it on. I could thread it in too, I suppose. I think I overdid it. See, I got this lock. I could torque it, but I usually I just put it right where it was. It's a little too tight right now. I'm gonna loosen it up. That's pretty good, it's just a hair tighter. Dare. Make sure everything feels right. And it does. Now I'm going to deal with this jazz. Put the fancy plastic dujamahicker in there. Oil pump thingamajig. Make sure that's seated. It should wiggle just a little bit and it should be nice and centered. Put a little motor oil on here. I'm just going to use 10W30. So after about the first 100 miles, I'm going to change it out and put regular transmission fluid that belongs in here because uh, it gets all the contaminants out. I got these two washers. I'm going to put those right here. Kind of need to get these out of the way so they fall into place here. Like that. Kind of. There it goes. Just like that. Okay, it's not just like that. So I got to get this to slide over here. Get that bolt in. Come on, baby. There it goes. I'm going to torque this bolt to 27 foot pounds. 25, 27, I'm guessing. I think that's about right.
Now to make sure this is right, when you look here, all of these are going to be centered. And that's, that's with the stick shift in the center and in neutral, if it's centered like that. All three of these shift forks are in the middle. And then you just want to go and look and make sure that these are in the middle. See, it's not, it's not on the sink roll. It's in between these two gears. So I know it's a neutral, so this should be right because it, it spins nice and free. Now I can put my nice clean super magnet here. Put my reverse gear in. Now I got to put this detent thingamajigger on. Of course there's grooves here and a groove there and a fork there. The fork goes around reverse gear. And these other, these other holes line up with these two pins. Obviously. 10 millimeter bolts should be torqued at about 8 foot pounds. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to crank it up to 100 inch pounds. It's fine. I'm going to get a rag and some brake cleaner and I'm going to clean this surface one more time. Got some ultra gray I'm going to use for this. You just need a really small bead. I know it's a neutral that grooves all fine and dandy. I hose this bolt down with brake cleaner. I'm going to put a little ultra gray on this. Time for the little balls. I got a seal here I can replace. I got a new one of those. Okay, this turns really nice. Now that I got this all put together, I checked my carrier end play. And I got nothing. It's it's way too tight. So I was hoping I could just put it all together and it'd work, but it it doesn't. Um, a lot of times these bearings are like a um, hundred thousandths of an inch thicker. That could have something to do with it. Um, I don't know. All the carriers are a little bit different, but it's a, it's actually too tight. And there's there's a shim on this side that's going to be too thick. So I got I got to take the whole top of this transmission back off. Here I go again, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this right. This thing is zero. I mean, there's no, there's no play at all. So I got, there's, it's 0 .01 millimeter is, is, is the allowable clearance on these. So the carriers can move 0 .01 millimeter. And like, if you got a one thousandths, if you got a hundred thousandths of an inch feeler gauge, which is almost possible to find, this one here, I don't, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is 0 .0015. It's a little thicker than what it's supposed to be, and um, I don't, I don't see any gap at all in here. Um, there's no way I can get anything in there. That's the smallest feeler gauge I got, and I tried to use a dial indicator and just put a socket underneath the bottom of it. And I lifted the case up and down a little bit to try to see if if the carrier had move and it, it didn't. I, I know it's going to be too tight. Gee, I don't know how tight this is, but I know it's too tight, so I'm going to take it apart. Now here's the shim for the thing. He's coming a crap load of different sizes. There should be a number on it. Here's a number on it I can barely see. I'm going to put this top back on. I don't have a zero to one micrometer either, which I really should have for this. I'm gonna put a bunch of these bolts back in here. I'm gonna torque them down a little lighter than 20 just because, make sure this is seated, and it is. I'm gonna throw some shims in between this bearing and see what kind of clearance I got. First thing I'm gonna do is measure this. I got about 52 and a half. 
I'm such a cheater. I used some uh, headliner glue and I glued down uh, some uh, thousand grit sandpaper and I wet sanded this because I measured this. I measured this thing. I got 52 thousandths of an inch and this shim is 52.5. So I just wet sanded it. You can see that. I just kept on wet sanding it and wet sanding it on a flat piece of metal until I got it right at 51.5. So it's exactly one half of one hundred thousandths of an inch thick right now, which is perfect because one, one millimeter is like 0 .0004. So that, that's, that's the minimum for this. So luckily I didn't have to go to Honda and order one of these and wait a week to get it. I just made my own. I, I, I'm going to consider myself lucky. Yeah, that's that's exactly 52 thousandths. So the thing was too tight, but it was only tight by a half a thou. This clip didn't fall in as easy as it did the last time. So I got to take this transmission and flip it upside down. Drop it. It's got to look like that. Okay, this thing's all put back together. It'll be a worker. I can smell it. I'm going to love it. Okay, bye.